Mbawa. With me at the desk is First Rand Chief Executive Sizwing Lasana to give us an update on the firm's BEE deal. Good to have you with us today, sir. Thank you. It's reached uh, maturation and it does seem as though it's performed very well. So obviously on the back of First Rand's performance overall. That's correct. You know, we've created uh, just over 22 billion rand for the BE participants in the scheme. And this includes obviously the broad-based uh, BE partners that we have, you know, like Mine Workers Investment Trust, uh, Gakiso Trust, as well as the WDB Trust, as well as staff. Tell us about the staff, because I understand some of them might be selling out, which might uh, uh, dilute the 8.1% holding. Yeah, they, there are people certainly who are going to, you know, take cash. Uh, in fact, most of them have already exercised their options, which they had to do by the 31st of December. Uh, but, you know, there are other people who are retaining the shares which they have. So the, in total, there's about 12,600 uh, staff, you know, that uh, benefited from this scheme uh, with a total value of about 5.3 billion rand. And in addition to that, uh, we have staff that's going to benefit, especially the low-income staff, mm. uh, who are going to benefit out of the Staff Assistance Trust, where we've created a trust which uh, is meant to benefit employees who end below a certain threshold uh, in terms of you know, assistance for the studies for their children at primary school and high school. Uh, so there are about 1,600 additional staff that are going to benefit from this uh, staff assistance trust. Sounds like a fantastic story. Maybe if you can also elaborate further on some of the other members, uh, the beneficiaries of uh, this uh, trust. Yeah, as I indicated, we have uh, four trusts, actually the big trusts, other than the staff assi assistance trust. Uh, we have the Mine Workers Investment uh, Trust, mm -hmm. uh, the Kahiso Trust, as well as the WDB Trust. Those three trusts in total are going to benefit about 11.2 billion rand out of the BE scheme. And obviously there's, uh, there are certain you know, conditions in terms of their continued participation and investment in first rand. Uh, so we expect that to extend over the next couple of years. There is then the first rand empowerment foundation, uh, which is called FREF. Uh, whose main purpose is to fund education initiatives and skills development in the country. Uh, and there's give or take about 5 billion rand that that foundation is going to benefit out of the first rand empowerment uh, transaction. Mm. Speaking of which, uh, the, the members, as you made mention of, some might have responsibilities to maintain their, their, their involvement. Uh, for those who might leave, are you looking to find other BE members who can add on to the trust or looking to retain the number as it is? No, at the moment we'll retain the number as is. So we're not going to do another BE transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, obviously there may be an appetite of some of the existing BE partners to actually increase their shareholding. But obviously that's a decision that they will have to make themselves. I'd like us to touch on education. Uh, one of the beneficiaries on the tr of the trust as well. Today is the first day back at school for some of those uh, inland provinces. And uh, your your thoughts on the matric results that we had recently? Again, maybe not a positive indicator as to how South Africa can be a competitive economy. Well, in fact, there's a very positive uh, outcome in terms of the matric results that were announced by the Minister of Basic Education last week. Mm. What the Department of Basic Education has done especially from last year, was to increase the complexity of the papers as well as challenge, especially the cognitive ability of the students that were writing the papers. So the students that wrote the papers were not just, you know, asked to answer questions based on memory or the lower kind of level questions. The questions are becoming a lot more complicated. They require the students to apply themselves, which is exactly what the universities and tertiary institutions have been asking for. And in fact, if we're going to be a competitive nation, especially in areas such as mathematics, you know, economics, uh, business studies, and so on, and, and sciences, it is important that we're able to compete with the rest of the world. And therefore, increasing the standards invariably is going to reduce the number or the pass rate, mm. which is not necessarily a bad thing, because it means those people who are able to go through the gates uh, stand a much better chance, not only of passing at their local universities, but also being competitive globally. Is there more that we can do? We know the corporate sector, like First Rand, is making some kind of contribution to education. 
what else or where else are we lacking? Well, the number of areas clearly that we are lacking, and I would like to really see and the National Education Collaboration Trust, which I chair, which brings together the unions, the private sector, civil society to work with government to improve the quality of education, mm -hmm. is emphasizing a number of areas. That includes the training and development of teachers, because we know that most of the teachers that we have in the system need to upgrade the skills which they have so they can cope, for instance, with the increasing demand of the curriculum as well as the increasing demand of just the information age in which you live. So there's a huge amount of focus on that. It is important to bring civil society, in other words parents, you know, to be directly mm. involved in what happens in the life of their kid, but also what happens in the school, in the school environment. Uh, so there are a number of those areas which the NECT working with the Department of Basic Education is addressing. Just on the uh, global economy front, uh, I'm sure you've obviously heard and been uh, maybe negatively impacted by the slump in commodities, the oil price as well as uh, copper, the sentiment that that creates. Does that ne impact a uh, financial services group like First Rand quite negatively? Well, not, um, not in a significant way. Yes, the obviously there are impacts in terms of uh, some of the exposures that the financial services industry may have mm -hmm. to countries, especially the oil producing countries such as Nigeria, Ghana, as well as Angola. Is that uh, a concern for you? Your well, it is a concern, imagine? but you know, it is a concern that we, from a as perspective of a first round, you know, we are managing quite well. Um, so there are negative implications, obviously, for those economies. There are negative implications for some of the exposures which some of the banks may have mm -hmm. uh, in some of the, the companies that may find themselves in a tough situation because of the drop in the crude oil prices. Mm -hmm. From a local perspective, ESCOM is another headache that we have to deal with locally. Again, additional pressure, or uh, yeah, is there a way of finding a solution to it? Well, I think we need to have all hands on deck. In other words, we need to have government, obviously ASCOM, already the independent power producers have come on board or are coming on board in terms of assisting. But I think it is unfortunate that we have to live with a period, you know, going forward of about a year, maybe even close to two years, where there are going to be power disruptions because they particularly affect the small and medium enterprises, which are mm. really key in creating job employment uh, in the country, as well as just supporting the economy. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, uh, the MPC, what uh, expectations do you have of them, especially given what's happening on the global economy? Well, there are a number of things. You just go back to the medium-term budget policy statement that the Minister of Finance, Minister Nene, announced last year. The number of things which they are doing already uh, in government in terms of other cutting consumption expenditure or trying to promote um, direct investment in, in areas such as in infrastructure and so on, which are really important because they provide the underpin for the economy. So th there are a number of those things and we know that, for instance, the capital markets are looking at whether or not the government is going to implement some of those things that were promised or were indicated by the Minister of Finance uh, during the MTBPS last year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nilasana, thank you so much for your insights today and for joining us. We wish you the best for 2015. Maybe thank next you. time we'll speak to you, it will be on results Absolutely. day. But that was uh, Susan Nilasana, Chief Executive of First.